So now it's time to talk about if I've got some angular velocities, how do I add them together? And so let's start off with, well, if I've got my rotation matrix for matrix 2 in frame 0, well, then what I can write that as is R1, 0, time t, times R2, 1, in time t. You know, because matrices, uh, or the rotations, uh, compose themselves. And so now if I want to take the time derivative of this, I'm going to drop off this t because that's going to be implied from now on. Uh, and I can apply the chain rule. So first I'll take the derivative of the first one. So it's r10 dot t times r21 t. And then plus the other side where I've got r10 t times r21 dot t. And so I've got this first one. I've got R20. Well, I know my, by my definition that is going to be a skew symmetric matrix times R20. And the thing that the angular velocity that we're rotating around, that's going to be omega uh, from 0 to 2 in frame 0. Because so I want to, how do I get from frame 0 to 2? I want to put that in frame 0. So you can think about this. Uh, if my base frame is in blue and my frame 2 is in purple and my frame 1 is in red, you know, I, I want to know, well, how is this purple one moving in terms of my base frame? Maybe I'll call this x0. Um, well, I need to know what is the axis that I'm rotating around. It's some axis, and then I have to say, you know, what frame am I talking about? So now we can take this first term that we have over here. And we can expand that in a similar way by our same property they have. This is some skew symmetric matrix um, times uh, my R10 times R21. And the, the vector that we are rotating around, this is some omega. And it is the omega from 0 to 1, 0 comma 1, in frame 0. We're in frame 0 here. Now I can do a little bit of simplification because I can multiply these two together. So this is just going to be R2 and 0. And I've got my skew symmetric omega 0, 1 in frame 0. Now this other term that I have, you know, this one is going to be slightly more interesting because we haven't seen all these things before. But again, I write that. So I've got my rotation 1, 0. And then this time derivative is going to be a skew symmetric matrix around some axis omega times R to 1, the current. And so my time, I'm just implied here. And this is going from 1 to 2. And it is in frame 1, because that's the frame that I was in. And you say, oh, we got a problem. You know, we want this to be in frame 0, but we're in frame 1. And so what we'd like to do is do some sort of similarity transform. And so I'm going to do that in a couple steps. 1, 0. So I've got S, omega 1 to 2, and 1. And then I'm just going to insert an identity matrix, because you can always insert an identity matrix. Nothing is going to be changed. And then the identity that I really want to insert, well, I want to do a similarity, I want to do a similarity transpose. I want to get this into 0, 1. I'd like to get rid of this. And so I can take this identity matrix and I can put, um, you know, I want to have maybe an R10 on this side. All right, so then I just multiply that R10 transpose over here. And then I've got R21. I've got everything that I had before. Similarly, S12 in frame 1. And now I can do my cute little similarity transpose with this. And also can combine these two. So this is um, R2 uh, in frame 0. I've got R10, S omega 1 to 2, times R10 transpose. I've got my similarity transpose, so I can say this is S of R10 times S and times omega, sorry, omega 1 to 2 in frame 1, R20. And so now, going back to what I have, is I remember that my R20, remember that is just R10 as a function of time, times R21 as a function of time. And my time derivative of that was my chain rule, R10 dot 
r21 plus r10 r.21. And so if I take those two terms from my previous page, I've got that this is s of omega 0, 1, 0 times my r20 plus s of r10 times r omega omega 1 to 2 frame 1 times r20. Now I notice that both of them are multiplied by this term. So what I can do is I can collect my similar terms, which are my skew symmetric matrix. 0, 1 to 1 in frame 0 plus S of R10 omega 1 to 2, 1. This times R20. And so you notice I've got the same term on both sides. I've got my R20 and R20 on both sides. Mm -hmm. And so I have a skew symmetric of omega 0, 2, 0 is equal to the summation of these two values over here. In fact, by my property of linearity, I know that this is S of A plus B, where these are obviously bold. And that means that this axis that I'm rotating, omega 0, 2 in frame 0, is equal to omega 0, 1, 0, plus my rotated omega 1 to 2 in frame 1. Uh, angular velocities can be added, but only if they're in the same uh, coordinate frame. Once they are in the same coordinate frame. I can't add omega 0 to 1, 0, and omega 1 to 2, and 1, but I can after I rotate them into the same frame. Now it's time to talk about the composition of angular velocities. So we already know about the composition of rotational matrices. So R of n, frame n in the base frame, is just R1 in the base frame times R2 in the first frame. You know, these are just a kinematic chain, so it just adds onto it all the way until we get to the very end. And that final frame, N, is just frame N in the N minus 1th frame. Now, if we want to know what is the time derivative of N in the base frame, well, any time derivative is just a skew symmetric matrix times the current rotation matrix, R, N, and 0. And so this is the, where is my omega from 0 to N according to the base frame. So now if I've got this omega 0, N in the base frame, well, as we saw in that previous example, that's just omega 0 to 1 uh, in the 0th frame. And then we're going to add in um, omega 1 to 2 in the next frame. And we're going to add in omega 2 to 3 in frame 2. But, you know, these ones, we can't add them together unless they're in the proper form. So they've all got to be, this is R1 in the 0th frame. And we'll have to rotate it from 2 into the 0th frame. Uh, plus, you know, this will be R3 in the 0th frame, omega 3 to 4, uh, according to frame 3, dot, 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 plus omega this is our um, n minus 1 in the zeroth frame times my omega from the n minus 1 to the nth frame in frame n minus 1. We can write it this way, but you know, as long as these rotation matrices are in the base frame, and these omegas are in the base frame, we're okay. So we can just, we can simplify that bit. This is omega 1, 0 to 1 in the base frame. And this, when we multiply this rotation matrix is this is just a vector. This is we can convert this to be in the zeroth frame. It's still going from one to two. And this frame here again, you know, if when you multiply the R2 to zero, all we're doing is placing this vector into the zeroth frame. It's still telling the rotation from two to three. This is still telling the rotation from three to four. We're just putting in the zeroth frame all the way out to the very end. Where we're still going from n minus one to n but now we're doing that in the zeroth frame. One thing that I want you to remember is anytime we've got a robot, it only rotates around the z-axis. 
Remember, that was our Dinabit Hardenberg convention. And so, remember, these omegas are both an axis and a velocity. So they're scaled unit vectors. They're not necessarily unit vectors. Um, and so the vector 0 to 1 is spinning around. It's spinning around the zeroth frame in frame 0. Um, and it's spinning at rate theta 1 dot. How fast is motor 1 moving? It's always moving around this frame. And so this one again is going to be theta 2. And it spins around the i minus 1th frame. So that's z1 in the zeroth frame plus theta dot 3. That's z2 in the zeroth frame because it always spins around the previous plus theta 4 dot is rotating around z3 in the zeroth frame all the way out to theta n dot is rotating around its previous z n minus 1 in the zeroth frame. And so there we have it. The composition of these angular velocities has a beautiful form just like we expected. That allows us to go back and answer one of our questions, which is what is the angular velocity of this chap who's sitting right here on this uh, scrambler? And his velocity is just what we're going to add together the, the omegas if they're in the Z frame. And so my omega for my, my answer for this is just going to be omega n0, or we could say 0 to n, is equal to c0, 0, 0 times theta 1 dot plus z1, 0 times theta 2 dot plus all the way out to z n minus 1, 0, 0, n dot. So this guy, since it only had two, it would only be the first two. Well, the nice thing about us is for this uh, scrambler, these z-axes are both uh, are actually equal to 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1 times theta 1 dot plus 0, 0, 1 times theta 2 dot. So now it's time to talk about what happens for the velocity. How fast is that guy moving, the linear velocity? And so... You can think of this guy who's, on, who's riding on this scrambler as just some point P. You know, he's rigidly attached to a moving frame 1. We'd like to know how fast is this guy moving. And so remember, if we're talking about where does P in frame 0, well, if we only knew P in frame 1, then what we'd have to do is multiply it by a rotation matrix. It says, how do I get into frame 1 from frame 0? And again, if this is a moving frame, then that r might be changing as a function of time. But I can take the derivative of this. Again, I have to apply my chain rule. And so that's going to be r10 dot uh, times p1 plus r10 times p1 dot. Now, if p1 is rigidly attached to frame 1 and frame 1 moves, then p moves, but it has no relative movement. And so this p1 dot is going to be 0. So r10 times the 0, 0, 0 vector is just going to be equal to 0. We get no movement there. Whereas this first term is a little more interesting. Remember, it's got an r10 dot, and so that is just some s of omega in that 0th frame times r10 um, times p1. And now we can simplify this out because this is just, oh, we have that from up above. This is this p0 times my s of omega naught from 0 to 1. And so that is just going to be my omega cross p0 because this generalizes a cross product. It's omega in frame 0, omega and omega from 0 to 1. So then we have my velocity of my point that's attached to a moving frame. Now my goal is to define the Jacobian. This page actually gives you everything that's going to happen. Well, we're going to split it, uh, split our Jacobian into a top three rows and a bottom three rows. Velocity Jacobian and the angular velocity Jacobian. And again, we've got eta is equal to this Jacobian times q dot. And so this upper half tells us you know, how do we get velocities. We've seen that today. Your velocity is going to be, if you have a revolute joint, then you need to know a moment arm from your origin of that, that joint that's moving all the way to the 
from where the joint that's moving, that's joint I minus one, all the way to the end of your robot. And then you have to do the cross product of that with the axis that you're rotating around, which is going to be that I minus one th axis. Whereas if you've got a prismatic joint, its velocity is just going to be, well, how fast are you moving in that Z axis? And then we're going to see how the lower half is going to be just what is the I minus one? What is that axis that you're rotating around in the base frame? And if you've got a prismatic joint, they don't create any rotation. So that's what we're going to see next week. And so our goal is to find this. Let's say that I've got some prismatic joint that's moving up and down. Well, that axis that it's moving up and down is the Z minus I minus one th axis. And so, you know, you just take that axis and then you multiply it by how fast that joint is moving and you've got your speed. And the lower half, if I move along this, no matter how fast I move in a straight line, it doesn't create any rotation. So that lower half is zero. Now the revolute joint, we're rotating around this joint and the rest of the robot is going to spin around that joint. So what we need to know is the tip of my robot to that joint that I'm spinning around. What is that moment arm? And then we're going to take a cross product of that with this axis that we're rotating around. And that tells us what the contribution to revolution is. And then we just scale it by how fast we're rotating. So Z I minus 1 times that moment arm. And then the lower half, the rotation that we get is just, you know, what is this axis defined in the base frame? So Z I minus 1 in frame 0. And then we've got everything that we need. So next chapter, I want you to read uh, chapter 4.4 .4 through 4.6 and be prepared and read this article on robot singularities and do watch that video that we showed at the beginning of today's lecture. See you soon. Stay classy.